Hello, good evening everyone. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and we relax, we craft, we work on a project together. I'm here for about an hour every evening. And uh, the project we're working on now is the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. Let me grab it here. So we are, we are working on uh, the cute little zigzags for this quilt. Uh, tonight, I would like to sew some of our, our stack of half square triangles that we've been working on. I want to sew them together to make our little half chevrons. Then eventually we'll turn those half chevrons into a full chevron, a full little zigzag like that. But uh, tonight I would like to do some of those half chevrons. However, I still have my hedgehog wall hanging, my unfinished project uh, that we worked on uh, uh, last Friday. I have that on my sewing machine still. I just have that one more round to go around the border and uh, I don't want to take it off the sewing machine. So we're going to do that border first, which will be a whole check mark off of this project. The uh, quilting will be done. Then I'll just have to bind it yet. Um, so we're going to sew that first tonight and uh, just to get it off the machine and get that project out of, out of the way again. And then we will sew those uh, half chevrons. Uh, so that's the plan tonight. Thanks for joining me. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. I'll show you what I can of this hedgehog. It's still on the machine here, uh, but then I can show you what it looks like. So thanks for joining me again. All right, here is here's my hedgehog wall hanging. Let me just try and lay it out this way so you can see. All right, so uh, it's embroidered with yarn, so it's it's embroidered super big. And then I've already tied the center area uh, to quilt it, but now I'm just dealing with this border and this border is, um, it's made out of jeans. I've been going around and around and I just have this last little area to go around and, and that's it. So uh, I thought we could try and get that done that I can reset the machine, get it all set up for our, our little half sh chevrons, half square triangles that we're gonna do today. So that's the plan. Let's get back over here, get situated. So I still have this little guy on my machine in the number, it's at the number three position. Uh, so once we're ready to sew the, the chevrons again, I will push this down and we'll be reset at the tightest uh, setting. So that was what I learned last time I worked on this project, <laughs> what that little dial or that little button was at the top. Yes, exactly. Another step to having it completed. Let's get her done. All right, so I've already kind of started this row, but I'm right at the beginning. So let's get my little grippets out. And I think we're all set to go. Let's do it. I just want to get around this so we can work on back on the um, our half chevron project. Oh, I just couldn't bear taking this off the machine without it done though. So I'm trying to yet let the walking foot do most of the work, but I am still having to kind of hold it with with the uh, grippets here just because it is it is hefty and doesn't want to move all that well so these jeans are left over from uh, my jean quilt that is also unfinished but if we can get this project finished then that'll be um, then we can work on work on that project next time we have uh, Finish It Friday. Oh, your machine doesn't have the cool button. I wonder if there's something else you need to Google. Yeah, I mean, if you have your, if you have your 
manual for the machine, maybe it says something in there. Otherwise, uh, sometimes you can Google your manual and it'll tell you. I haven't, you know, like I was saying, I, I could not find it. Or I, like I didn't, I've read the manual for my machine, but that was, I don't know, before I was sewing as much and maybe I just brushed past what that button was, but I don't remember uh, seeing that at all. Oh gosh, I don't even know what the button is called. I would, it's probably some sort of, I don't know, tension or pressure for the presser foot. I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up in my, in my um, manual again. I'm sure it's in there, how could it not be? But I don't ever remember seeing it just cause it was never a focus of mine before. But man, that's helped a lot. So before, it was pressed down all the way, which pushed the foot as tight as it could press onto my fabric. And my jean, since it's so stretchy, was bunching up. And uh, by just lifting it up a little bit or having it not so pressurized, basically, uh, this is sliding underneath the foot a whole lot easier. Because I'm working with this thick, weird material with the, with the jeans. Ooh, here we go. Here's a, a there's a seam there, um, so it needed a little help. All right, let's get rid of this pin. Maybe try press or foot tension button. That's a, that's a good idea. That sounds like a good search term. I can tell that this uh, corner is really worn, like the jeans are, I must have, or whoever whose jeans these were, probably my husband's, because uh, most of these jeans are his, uh, but these must have been near the knee or something, they're kind of, kind of thin. Oh, and you know what, I need to get the line on there a little bit better. Let's grab the, oh, I can use the can use my grippets as a ruler. So I'm just, I have my little white chalk pencil thing here. I just need to get this diagonal going again so I know kind of where, where I'm aiming for. So I'm, here, let, let me show you a little bit. So I drew the diagonal on there, you know, because I need to know where all these points are. Oh, I'm trying to watch the Olympic skating. I know, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. All right, and then there. So I'm aiming for that point right there. Ooh, that's awfully close to the edge here too. I might wanna aim up a little higher, I think. I'm gonna try and stretch this, stretch this corner out a little bit because it's not looking very square. So I'm just gonna pull on it a little bit here. Just kind of aiming towards that line. And that looks pretty okay. All right, let's rotate. So I have, um, I have the three more sides for this tonight. And then, uh, then I do want to get into I do want to get into the chevrons yet tonight, so we'll see how that goes. Usually I have my ironing board out for the chevrons in case we get that far, but that's reducing my, uh, my workspace here a little bit, so we gotta finagle things a, a little bit more. All right, there we go. Press the foot down. All right, I'm aiming for my uh, line again here. I'm gonna have to deal with this bulk though on my left, so I think we'll be stopping quite a bit and shimmying, shimmying this quilt up. Up some more. This is like my biggest, I, I know I've talked about this before, but when we get free motion quilting on the chevron quilt, that this is my like, 
per, this is like what I feel like might be the biggest obstacle is just dealing with all this bulk. But yeah, maybe I get like a tray next to me here or something and uh, that can, I can lay some of the bulk on that tray instead of it just dangling. I don't know, we'll have to see. All right, let's take this pin out. I won't have any more basting pins on this when we're done, which is awesome. I'm excited for that. Zooming along. I was watching some of the skiing earlier. I like all the skiing stuff. It's crazy how fast they go down the hill. That's just, it's just so dangerous. <laughs> All right, I'm just kind of aiming towards that next point right there. Oh, you use chairs to handle the bulk. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something because you know, even with this teeny tiny thing, it's it's annoying. Like I almost need something on the table next to me too, because I'm I'm raised up a little bit because I have my my sewing extension table here. So that's about I don't know four inches or so off the surface of my table. That's why those sunken in um, tables, like the sewing tables, where you can drop your dropping your machine into it. That's why those are so nice because then you have that whole flat surface of your table for quilting. Um, I'm gonna have to come up with something for that, I think. Something that's not gonna move around and uh, something that will, my uh, quilt can still slide along. This is going pretty fast though. We're, um, I'm wrapping up this second side. Yeah, the problem with the regular ironing board is I don't think I have enough space for that <laughs> in, in this area. Um, I do have an extra leaf for this table. Like it extends a little bit more. So I could, uh, get that out and um except for then no one will be able to walk by i'm gonna have to put it put it back every single time oh bungee cords yeah if i had a whole space set up for that i've seen that on on um on the internet sometimes when people will have the bungee cords from their ceiling and then clamp on the edges to relieve um some of the heft some of the you know kind of just lets your quilt kind of float a little bit above your surface, which is kind of cool. I don't know if I'll be able to do all that, but we're going to make it work. We're going to figure it out. I'm going to, I'm going to sew, I'm going to quilt it in this small space and we're just going to see what happens. We're going to see what the pitfalls of small space, oops, sorry, small space quilting are going to be. All right, that's that side. Two more and we're done. Oh my gosh, you saw the guy's face doing the skeleton. Yeah, the skeleton. I was watching that last night. Oh God, that's, that's a pile of crazy. Um, where they, where it's like the luge, but head first. <laughs> They're like, chin is like a centimeter above the ground. Crazy. It's got to be scary. Oh, those sports are scary. <laughs> Man, they were saying one of the um, women's slaloms, uh, she was, uh, she tore her ACL like four months ago and it got some special surgery and now she's doing the slalom which I can't believe my husband tore his ACL and that was a long recovery 
and for her to be doing it um, a couple months out. Or quilting it in halves. Um, you mean like doing one half first and then turning it around and doing the other half? Or do you mean like doing it in halves and then assembling it after that? Like a quilt, quilt as you go project. I'll have to find some batting and everything yet for, for the quilt. So I can't finish it up too fast, all these half chevrons, because um, I got to get supplies yet. Uh, oh, these are, oh, I keep forgetting to put it a link to it, but they are by Sewing Mates. They're called Grip It's. Grip it. Um, so if you just go to sewingmates.com, uh, at sewingmates.com, there'll be a, a tab for the grip it's, but I, I really like them. Um, you can use them as a ruler. You know, when you're free motion quilting, you can use it as a ruler. And then um, they have like these nice rubber grips at the bottom and like these little nubbins on the top. So I can kind of just push my fingers against them or I can put my whole hand on it. I really like them so far. Although I, I'm not, the only thing I have to compare them to is not using anything. Um, I haven't used the gloves with the grippets, but I just know I, I don't, I just hate having gloves on. So I, I saw these and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna try, try those instead. And that, so far I really like them. And you know, I've been using them as a ruler too. Uh, I know people, there's like the whole free motion quilting with rulers. So you could use, um, you can use the curve side or the straight side for your ruler quilting. Kind of neat, I think. I'm happy with them for sure so far. I like that my hands are free. Joining the halves after it's quilted. So I have never done that before. Jenna, I've seen I've seen it done um, online, but that whole thing is sort of a mystery to me still. Like the uh, joining halves together when they're already quilted, or like a quilt as you go project where all your blocks are quilted before you do it. I've never done um, either of those, so I don't know. That's a little bit of a mystery. I'm gonna see if I can. I'm just going to make it hard for myself, basically, just because I want to see how it goes. And then I can decide uh, the, the areas that need improvement. So we're just going to, we're going to just deal with um, sewing in this small space, a, a big quilt. And um, then I'll be like, okay, yeah, I totally need this and this and this next time we do it. Or, you know, maybe we make some of those decisions along the way and adjust as we go. Oh, no problem. No problem, Brenda. All right, we are almost to the end of this side. And there's just the final edge and we're done. So I haven't I haven't made the binding for this yet, so I suppose that's that's the next step measuring this edge and and uh making a binding. But after that, I can trim this down and sew that binding on. That'll be a nice project to just uh, hang out and stitch the binding on. But we'll definitely be one more step closer to having this done, which I'm super excited about. All right, I need to get that line on here again. It's kind of there a little bit, but it's it's been it's just kind of like this white chalk, so it's it's been fading. The more I handle handle this, it's about right there. Looks good. I'm gonna aim for that. And I am gonna kind of stretch this corner out again. These little corner pieces are kind of not square. All right, I think about right there. 
Let's rotate and it'll be the last one. Gretchen, I really love binding too. I know it's like a, a love or hate thing. People either really like it or, or really hate it. And, and I kind of love it. I just, I, I, it's like the last step. You know you're finishing the quilt up. And um, I don't know, I, I like the little hand work of it all. But I know some people just hate it so much. <laughs> I'm trying to get a bunch of the bulk on the table here. But it's just kind of twisting. This is our last, last row though. Our last straightaway. Then really we can go right into the chevrons. I just have to lower that tension thing and uh, that tension button. And um, that's it. I'm, I've been using the same thread. So I'm letting the walking foot move my fabric along, but uh, what I'm doing is just trying to use the grippets to keep everything straight because it wants to keep turning because there's so much weight, weight of the quilt. I don't have it rolled up here very well. Okay, there we go. We're a little straighter. All right, about halfway, here's our center square. I'm just gonna aim, aim towards that point. Change. Oh yeah, you're right. I gotta change the foot too, Bonnie. Yep, you're right. Um, I don't wanna use my walking foot for, for piecing. Ooh, I would have forgotten that. Thanks for the reminder. I think I have the foot um, readily available here. Yep, I see it. So, yep, I will um, we'll press that button down and change the foot, and then we'll be ready to go. Have you seen Binding Babies? Oh, I have seen those. I think they're cute. I'll have to, I, I, I don't have one, Paula, but they are cute. Just a way to keep your, your binding in order, or like especially if you're just storing your binding um, for a little while before you use it. It's like a cute little spool to put it on almost. And I think you can put that spool right on your machine so it just comes off of it without twisting up and stuff too, so. I might have to look into some of those. I might be placing an order for some stuff soon, so maybe I'll find some of that. I gotta remember I need to get a, get batting though. I don't have any batting for this quilt, for the, uh, the um, chevron quilt yet. All right, so I'm just aiming for the point here. You know, this has a lot of, you know, bulk. So I'm just gonna maybe try and ease that a little bit. So it doesn't all happen at the end here. This is stretchy fabric, and I think I'm on the bias a little bit, which is stretchy. All right, and then once I get to about here, I'm just gonna reduce my stitches, stitch length a lot, and I'm not gonna back tack or anything. This is something I read about quilting. Well, I don't know, you know, how other people feel about it, but I'm giving it a try. Just doing a bunch of tiny baby stitches, and that's how we're gonna stop it. So, all right, that is it. I'm going to um, pull that out of here. Let's grab scissors. We'll snip. All right, so I do wanna, let's turn this off. Wanna quickly snip all my little jumps out of here. 
and we'll snip those on the back as well. I do the front first because then I can pull the little ends through to the back. So instead of stopping and uh, um, restarting, I just jumped to the next next area here. Ooh, get both of these threads. Yay, now I just have to make a binding and uh, stuff together. I kind of like how this turned out, just the little pivot in the middle of these blocks. I think it's just enough, uh, just enough design for this. All right, so let's snip these. So by just tugging on them, I'm, I can pull that thread from the front to the back. All right, and that is it. Ooh, we got a little stuff going on here. Okay, so done with the hedgehog. Let me see if I can back out and show you guys it a little bit. Oop, my iron's in the way. Take you off the thing here. So here we go, little hedgy. All his little hairs. So uh, he's within this blue border here. And uh, yeah, I think the binding, I'm gonna do this red, the same red because it kind of it kind of matches his nose. So I think it'd be cool with that bright red binding all the way all the way around. So and I got all this, I got this, I'm using this red for the chevrons quilt. so I have a, I have the bolt out here still. Um, so I'll be able to, to um, just, you know, I don't have to go searching for the fabric. But yay, step done! Oh, and I, I just really like how it looks like on the, looks on the back too. Um, these are from the little ties, and then we got this, just this fun border. It's just simple, this straight line stitching, uh, but I, I really like how it, it turns out sometimes. So, all right, let's get that guy out of the way, and let's fix her up here for uh, our next thing. I'm going to just throw this behind me here. Okay. First up, let's switch the the presser foot. So I'm just unscrewing it there. And there we go. So that's our that's our walking foot there. Get rid of that. And back to our just our quarter inch foot. Oh, and I got to remember to press that button again. this going. All right, I think that's, oops, I just, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, my, um, this is, this is from that new set of feet and I forgot that I have an adapter and now I have all these flat feet like without the um, shank on there so that I just have to clip, clip back in now. I accidentally released it. There we go. All right, we're clipped. I'm going to just put these threads underneath. All right, and then back up to the top here to get my tension back to it. Let me show you this again, because it's, it's kind of cool. Um, it has those numbers on. So if we get real close here. There, you can see the numbers right now. It's on that um, between three and two. So I just had to press this down all the way. And we're back to normal, but here's how, here's it up all the way. So this is as loose as it gets. It's at zero. So at zero, I can really kind of move underneath it without any, without any um, resistance at all. Um, I need to go all the way back down to the bottom uh, to get, to get it all, um, the tension tight again. So, all right, back to business here now. But man, it feels good to have that, that project out of the way. So, all right, back to our half chevrons here. So we are making um, half chevrons like this. So I've already had these stacked kind of in order. So all I should have to do is take the top off the bottom and, and pull it down, and then we should have the chevron. But I'm just going to double check every single time that our chevron goes in this direction. I don't want it, you know... I don't want it to go the other way like our other other chevron. So here's here's the other direction. We're done with those. I, I need them to go this way instead. So we're just gonna grab from 
um, the top of this pile and just cruise along. So I'm going to start by putting a little, a little, uh, a leader in there just to get going. Let's turn it back on. Got to change my stitch length back up to 12. And all right, so we're going to chain, ah, lost my thread. I didn't, didn't hold my thread down enough. It likes to, um, my machine likes to pull on this thread quite a bit. Oh, let's snip that. That's need a nice sharp edge there. And I didn't hold it, hold it enough. It pulled itself out. Let's see if I can thread this. All right, good. We're in business. I don't have a fancy threader on my machine. That's what's really nice about about my mom's machine. It, it has like a little threader, so I just have to hook it on the threader. But nope, my machine doesn't do that. Okay, now we're ready to go. Are you gonna show making the binding of the hedgehog? Um, I'm probably not gonna show the making of the binding unless um, unless it ends up being, you know, maybe I will actually, because if it ends up being the first Friday, so every first Friday of the month, I wanna have the finish it, finish it Friday where we work on an unfinished project. And you know, March is coming up real quick here, so <laughs> that might be the next time I work on work on the hedgehog. So who knows? Maybe maybe we will um, do the binding since that's the that's my next step. So yeah, we maybe maybe that is going to be the case. We'll have to see. Oh, I don't think I've this pushed in all the way. All right, there's our first one, and then we'll just keep grabbing. Yeah, I mean, chances are I won't work on that project um, until then. So yeah, maybe maybe I will do the binding. And even if I do work on the project, it'll just be trimming that edge, uh, trimming trimming the edge, so it's all equal, and you know, so we could still still do the binding. I could have it measured and, and then we can just cut and trim. So that'll probably take more than more than one time though, uh, because um, we'll have to, I'll have to make the binding first that, you know, which includes folding and pressing and cutting and all that. So that'll take some time. So I won't, it won't be, um, I won't be making it and sewing it on at the same time. But maybe it'll be the next month after then that I work on that again. Eventually it'll get finished though. Oh, I love Johnny Weir. I think Johnny Weir and Tara Pinsky together are so fun. So I'll just catch some of that later. So does the do the Olympics go on for another week yet or so? Or is it just one week long? I wasn't positive. I'm just happy I'm able to see any of it because it's on NBC and usually um, that station doesn't come in for us. But uh, ever since the Super Bowl, it's, it's all of a sudden coming in better. Better for us. So it's, oh, so it's a whole nother week yet. Yay. That's fun. So we'll probably just get these sewn tonight. I don't think I'm going to press them or anything. Um, and we might just barely get them all sewn. So tomorrow we'll press them. Maybe even um, separate them from being on this long chain. Maybe we'll wait for tomorrow for that. Depends how far we get. Then we still have a lot of trimming to do, but it's always fun to take a break in the middle and get some sewing done. Hmm. 
Ooh, this one's a little stretchy for some reason. Our pile's not too big here. It always uh, goes a lot faster sewing than it does trimming them all. So days of trimming, and it, then it's just done so fast. Ooh, I love this one again, the colorful diamond fabric. Oh man, I'm almost done getting the uh, my new uh, my new kits, my new embroidery kits together uh, for Joann's, and so I'll be able to share them with you soon. I wanna um, I actually want to do one of them for the cover of the sketchbook cover that we'll be working on coming up. So I'll show you show you guys that soon. Um, I'm just trying to finish up this Joanne stuff, then I'll be back focused on on our next project, the uh, the sketchbook cover from um, from my book. So the one from my book has a, a little kitty cat on that's uh, appliqued with wool and embroidery. But I'm gonna, you can do whatever you want really for the cover. So I'm gonna do one of these new embroideries and I think it's gonna be fun and cute and I'm really excited for it. You've matched all your squares and put a clip where you sew the whole pile all ready to sew away. Yay, exciting. Man, it feels good every step finished on, on these things. Like I'm, I'm excited for the hedgehog, that's a whole that's a whole step that was sitting around for a long time. That border, or the, all the quilting in general, really. You know, on a whim, you just start these projects, right? And then they're unfinished projects sitting around forever. Oh, you saw the pearl bracelet. Oh, there's mini pearl bracelet fabric, too. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that, Bonnie. Yeah, it's... It's pretty popular, I think, this, this fabric, this pearl, pearl bracelet fabric. That's fun that it comes in a little mini size, too. I think I would like that. Do you make the kits for Joann's or use a separate company? No, we, we do the kits for, for Joann's that are in, that are in Joann's. Yeah, so those are all penguin and fish kits. There's no, we don't license them or anything. We're, we're the manufacturers for them. Stack's getting shorter. Oh yeah, it, it's it's a ton of work, but it, it's fun, and I have some very lovely people that help me out. Pile purples coming up. Oh, the embroidery ones are always sold out. Oh, well, that's cool. Oh yeah, I would, uh, I would um, love to have them other places. That's, I'm hoping, you know, I don't know. I'm hoping to try and get them in a few more places this year. That, that's a long process. If I, if I manage to do that this year, they probably wouldn't be there until next year or a year and a half or so. <laughs> um. 
working with those big companies is, is like a long, long process. All right, there we go. Um, got about eight or so here, I think. Oh, she even had a green with a, a lighter green pearl. Oh, so not even the white, like a, a green with a lighter green. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Yeah, it's a fun fabric for sure. Ooh, I like this one. So cute. So speaking of Joann's, if there is any, if you guys have any ideas for patterns or kits that you would love to see, let me know, like send me an email or, or something. And, um, you know, I'm always trying to make more art for more kits and everything. And if there's something you guys would actually would um, totally love let me know but yeah I'm excited to, sh to show you what's coming up next um, yeah so almost ready for that just gotta get through some manufacturing of stuff and um, then my brain will be a functioning object again <laughs> This is my little respite in the evenings here. Ooh, I still really like this one too. It's just wacky. This fabric. A few more to go. I drew that uh, little teacup with the kitty on the other day and and a few of you guys said that you'd like to see that as a pattern as a embroidery so I might uh, turn that I kind of actually want to do a whole series of little little teacups like that might be fun do a little teacup sampler or something Gotta, uh, gotta get drawn more. Oh, the drawstring bag with the lining. Ooh, with, with the embroidery motif would be cool. Yeah, I would definitely like to have those, do those. All right, two more, it looks like. Yeah, there's the that drinks for two pattern that was the freebie for uh, that embroidery supplies bundle. Um, could pitch that too, maybe. Another little teacup. Oh, teen kits that would be cool yeah I'd love to do um, a lot of it's for like baby but I would love to do something that you know a little older kids and stuff would like to all right this is our last one. Oh, color by number and embroidery that's kind of interesting all right I need to find another 
leader here. Here we go. Okay, we are done with that, and I think there is enough time yet that we can separate all these as well. Oh, you always want to make a teacup and saucer uh, for the kitchen. Oh, that'd be cute. Oh, embroidery and applique. Yeah, that'd be sweet together. All right, I'm going to make our little device here again, our little trimming device. So instead of cutting this with a scissors, I'm doing this funny little device where I get my seam ripper and I stick it on the top of a, uh, a spool of thread like that. And I'm going to just snip all of these, these chains as we go. Ooh, a teach me to pick fabric kit. That's kind of interesting. Cats, cats, I will have some kitties coming up. I can't wait to show you guys that. Soon, soon I will share all of the new stuff. I'll have six new kits, and then I'll actually have a few more uh, later in the year um, on our website, too. So I think we're going to pick this up tomorrow and, and press these tomorrow instead of dealing with, with the pressing tonight. We'll, we'll press, and then we'll start trimming our other pieces. This is fun. I love the little seam ripper, seam ripper dude. It's a good, good reason to use a seam ripper, right? <laughs> All right, let's get this back so I don't stab myself. Okay, so we have our pile. So these we will press open tomorrow, but there we have our, our half chevrons, and those will go with the ones that we already have done that go in the other direction. So we'll get our little, um, I wanna, let's just, let's just do one up quick. Let's get a little zigzag going here. I kinda wanna see what it looks like just, just by grabbing from the top. But yay, look, our, this is uh, like a, kinda what our whole thing's gonna look like. Let's add another row. I'm getting crazy now, getting getting a little too into this right now, but I wanna just wanna see. I'll back out a little bit, bit for you guys just so we can take a look. But I'm super stoked. I think this is just gonna be just gonna look so fun. But there now we can get the red zigzag in here too. I'm gonna get a little higher so you can see. But yay! So this is going to be the general look for my quilt. And man, the um, red is really going to pop, I think. So I was thinking that it would blend into the background. Like it wouldn't be very contrasty. Um, but I mean, I think I can definitely, I mean, it's very obvious, these the pattern versus the solid. So I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, it's coming together. Uh, oh, so my seam ripper, I think it's a clover seam ripper. Let me just check here. I'm sure there's a, it's got this kind of little, little soft grip. Oh, there isn't, there isn't a label on here, is there? Oh, Dritz. Okay, so it's a Dritz label. So um, D-R-I-T, um, not a label, uh, seam ripper, but D-R-I-T-Z. Just do a search for that. It's the one with a, the soft grip on it. Um, it seems to work fine for me so far. I would love like a cool vintage seam ripper that's like the little, that like long and metal with the little tip on there. That would be fun. <laughs> so, all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we're gonna call it an evening here. And then tomorrow we will, we'll press all our new ones flat. So, um, so they're, so they lay nicely like all these other ones. So, all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around. We'll call it. All right, so thank you so much again for joining me tonight. Uh, if you guys are new here, I know some of you are new popping in here. My name's Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, and I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So I will be here tomorrow. And again, we go for about an hour. We're cutting it a little short tonight um, just because it's a good time to stop. We'll start the new, new um, step, the pressing, tomorrow. 
uh, by the time we have that all set up, well, <laughs> it'll be an hour. So, all right. And then I will get this up on uh, the Penguin and Fish movies uh, page on YouTube. So you can watch the replays there. And I'd love if you hit subscribe, then you'll get an email when the new video is up and ready to go. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. We will press uh, the, the guys that we sewed today and get trimming more of that pile. <laughs> We're working, working down that pile. I want to get to the point that I can lay this all on the floor and we can start arranging things. And based on what we just did, just laying them out, I think we can be pretty random with this and it's just going to look fine. So I'm excited for that. Um, all right, guys. Uh, thanks again. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.